Hey there, Jim Johnson from AccentHelp.com. And I had a question about a phonetic symbol and how to put that into action. So I actually want to make it about more than one diacritic, this little symbol. I want to make it about more than one, and I want to really apply it to learning accents, though it can apply to learning languages as well, which is what this person was focused on. So these four diacritics that I want to show you are raised, lowered, and also what's called advanced or retracted. Now, when I'm talking about those, if I look at it for a moment in relation to the vowels, this is the mouth. Top of the mouth, the bottom of the mouth, front of the mouth, back of the mouth. So this is the E sound that's very high and forward, E, as opposed to the ah, which is very low and back. So I could take an E and I could lower it towards E. So it becomes a little bit ill-like. I could take the A diphthong, which is a specific thing this person asked about, and I could lower it, which means I'm taking it down a little bit towards the E sound. So it's almost like the raised E, E is getting close to an A. Okay, the level of anal retention that I'm getting into right now and the difference between these sounds is cray cray, okay? These are really close to each other. And in some ways you could think of almost this as like C sharp, D flat in musical terms, if that makes sense to you. They're almost the same note I like to think of as them as different, though. Is it more eh-ish, or is it more eh-ish? Eh, 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 eh. There is a difference between those. Now, with advanced and retracted, this can be used, for example, with vowels as well, taking a back vowel and moving it forward. So we could take the ah and move it forward and go, Ah, uh, so that it starts to approach a vowel at the front of the mouth, the pakikar and havad yad. Ah, uh, and this one could be retracted towards ah, uh, moving back in my mouth. So that's what those diacritics mean. They're sort of a way to make some adjustments to move around inside of the mouth. And I will say those kinds of adjustments and the awareness of shifting, like taking the time to shift from E towards I, going E, figuring out those kinds of shifts can be really helpful for accents. So for example, the OO at the back as in goose, could shift forward, maybe to this symbol that is the barred U there, ooh, which exists in a lot of different accents. So starting to play around with shifting forward, shifting down, shifting up, making those kinds of shifts and getting used to moving around in your mouth and almost treating this, these vowel symbols like they're a road map, these can be really helpful for you building your skill set for being able to make different sounds for different accents. Now, oftentimes I will say these minor tweaks and adjustments get taken care of if you focus on the placement, the sense of where the sound lives in the mouth, the mouth posture or the oral posture. But sometimes that posture isn't enough and you need to specifically make a shift. In which case, being able to put these four diacritics into practice so that you can make a distinction between O and A, O, Being able to make those adjustments and tweak it around like that. Yeah, I know it's really geeky, but that's what you got to do. You got to kind of train your mouth to be able to move around. What I like about these diacritics is that you can use this as a bit of a visual cue 
that can help you with what you're doing inside of your mouth. Because I want your mouth and your ears and your brain and your eyes to be able to work together, to coordinate, to be able to do these different sounds and conceive of sounds that you couldn't even think of or conceive of before. And those distinctions, as tiny as they can get, that's a big part of building your skill set for learning accents. If you want to learn some specific accents, you can check out the materials at accenthelp.com.